Hello, my name is Caleb Smith with the Rocket Miner newspaper, and here is your regular coronavirus update for this Saturday, April 4th, 2020. Before we get into the latest numbers and updates, and there are a few things for us to get into, I want to ask us, how are you doing? Are you holding up best way you can? How are you feeling? More important than me asking you the questions, more and more important things I'd like to pose to you is, have you had this conversation with somebody else today? Or have you reached out to somebody so that you could have this conversation with them? One of the interesting principles that we've learned about the human mind is that when we have timelines, or when we are able to divide things into subsections, it's easier to be efficient and keep on task and actually keep your optimism going. We've even done studies with sleep deprivation that as long as people can go a long time without sleep, but if they still have goals that they get, goals and tasks that they can divide up into tiny pieces and get care, take care of and then move on to the next one, that's easier to endure than longer open-ended tasks or timelines where you're not quite sure when the trial is going to end. And that's where we find ourselves right now is that it's open-ended, it's unknown. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And I would liken it to one time when I was on a bus full of kids in track who got in trouble, and the coach said, start running. We didn't know whether it was one mile, two miles. Actually, as it turned out, it was one of those cases where the number of laps depended on how on individual factors for each one of us. Some of us got to stop running because we, we did what we were expected to with a minimal amount of complaining, at least not to the coach. While other people who didn't, didn't push themselves as hard or were, were picking, a, picking a fight with the coach, they had, it's, they had to endure longer. None of us knew what was the final number. So I'd encourage you to be talking to other people because can't just push through it. We're going to have to sleep asleep on it a couple nights. We, we have to be preparing ourselves for a long haul as opposed to just something that if we try to treat it like this is something short term, we will burn out. So please be asking these questions. Hopefully people in your family or friends or those who you can reach out to and like I said, be a person who can have these conversations with other people so that together we can get through all this. On Saturday, it was reported that Sweetwater County has had its fourth confirmed coronavirus case. It, this came through a private lab. This is a, it's, the case is, involves a man in his 30s who was living in Rock Springs. He is reported to be in good condition and continues to self-isolate at home. We've already heard that the first case, a Green River man in his 40s has recovered. His close contacts are in quarantine until April 10th. And the second and th third cases, a Green River man in his 20s and a, and a child who is actually in this same home as the second case. They all are, appear to be in good condition and, and are self-isolating at home. No need for hospitalizations or anything more serious. This is a time when social distancing is more important than ever. If you do have to be out and about, they say stay more than six feet away from people who you're not housed with. Work from home as much as possible. Please use all the social media and technology that we can, whether it's phone, email, FaceTime, all that. Another advice right now is to send only a designated person to go to the grocery store, just one person. Now, just because you're self-isolating, the county officials stress that doesn't mean that you should stop moving. If you've got a yard or, it's, or, or a porch, take advantage of that. If you don't have that, you're fortunate that you live in Wyoming, where wide open spaces are a very short distance away. That will help you keep
keep your blood moving in, keep you from becoming too sedentary. Statewide, the Wyoming Department of Health is reporting that there are 187 cases. That's an increase of 21 overnight. Breaking down the numbers, Laramie County remains the hardest hit with 42 cases. Teton and Fremont counties both reported 36. Natrona had, four, had 23. Sheridan had 11. Johnson County had 8. Campbell County had 7. Carbon, Sweetwater, and Albany counties each reported 4. Converse showed 3. Washakie, Goshen, Goshen, and Uinta counties each had two. Lincoln, Sublet, Park counties each had one case each. Thus far, it's, it's nice to know that right now that Crook, Weston, Niobra, Platte, Hot Springs, and Bighorn counties have reported no coronavirus cases yet. And of the, we've already met, it's 187 at the top. The Department of Health is also reporting that the 49 patients diagnosed with COVID-19 have already recovered. One other thing that has come out, and some people were practicing it even before the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention talked about it, but maybe you're seeing a few more people out with face coverings, cloth wraps and whatnot. The CDC is now suggesting wearing a cloth face covering in public settings when social distancing measures are difficult to maintain, such as if you're in the line at the supermarket, pharmacies, um, which are normally known to be areas of significant community-based transmission. It notes that just a simple cloth covering can slow the spread of the virus and help people who may have the virus and do not know it from spreading it. And give a little bit of prote protection to those who don't have it yet either. It can be fashioned for household items or a running gag in my family is that I lose scarves a lot. I usually get a handful each Christmas to make up for the fact that I will have lost quite a few from the year before. So, honestly, just as something as simple as that, or if you want to go to cdc.gov, they do have directions on how you can make one for yourself. They stress that the cloth coverings that are recommended are not surgical masks or the N95 respirators. They want to stress that we want to leave those as consider those critical supplies for health care workers and other first responders. We don't want to stock up on those for fear of leaving those who are on the front lines dealing with the medical crisis, those who have the experience and the responsibility. We want to make sure that they're fully equipped. So whenever possible, use, use your own face mask. When it comes to Fitting them, it says they should fit snugly but comfortably against the side of the face. They suggest that it be secured with ties or ear loops. I always found a good knot behind the head. We'll, we'll do the trick. Include multiple layers of fabric. Allow for breathing without restriction. And be able to be laundered or machine dry, dried without damage or change to the shape. When it comes to other frequently asked questions, the CDC notes that these face cloth coverings should be regularly cleaned. Um, the degree depends on how frequently you're using them. If you're, if you're one of those people who have to be out and about a lot, wash them a lot. They also note that when removing the cloth, be careful not to touch your eyes, nose, or mouth, and wash hands immediately after removing. The same way if you if you're going out there with protective gloves, you're kind of defeating the point if you're getting your, it's if you're getting it in your T zone, as we talked about. Your T zone is that area between your eyes, nose, mouth, where it's easier to get that in your system. So just an extra step that we are encouraged to take. It's not required. I know I did a double take in the supermarket when I saw that 
just yesterday, I was stocking up on my milk supplies. I drink a lot, and there's, and I'm staying to the gallon limit. We're going to see that a lot more often. These are just simple steps that we can take to be able to better weather this trial that will go on in an un unknown length. Wearing face coverings. Checking in with friends and family and asking how they're doing. Taking time to listen. With the hope that if you need, need some time that they'll be able to return the favor to you when you really need it. So this has been Caleb Smith with the Rocket Miner newspaper. Wishing you a good day, a good evening, and a safe tomorrow.